Hi everyone, I'm Nathan, this is Dave, and uh, this is our presentation on the design and fabrication of the monocycle. So, a couple of things that me and Dave wanted to keep in mind as we went through the senior technical project as a whole was how are we going to best demonstrate the knowledge and skills that we've learned over the past four years here at Alfred um, in this project. Um, we felt that the monocycle was a good choice and would give us many opportunities to do so, um, and we wanted to be able to show that we were capable of taking what we learned in the classroom as far as design work is concerned and translating that into an actual working prototype. So some of our design criteria for the uh, prototype for further design uh, to begin with was we wanted to achieve a speed of 10 miles per hour um, to travel a distance of at least half a mile and be able to negotiate the angle of inclination equal to those seen around Alpha City campus. Um, so we wanted it to be able to be a functioning vehicle um, that, he, that is able to drive around and we were able to demonstrate on the office of the campus. So in order to get started, me and Dave first had to sit down and uh, think about a couple of uh, the design parameters that would be required to fulfill the criteria that we had just laid out. Um, some of them can be pictured here, final desired speed, uh, we selected a diameter for our uh, outer wheel, uh, radius of the final drive bushing. These uh, first initial calculations were just intended to give us a, a foothold so that we could go on and calculate more values as pictured, for example, the required horsepower that would allow us to select the motor, um, the radius of the final drive bushing that allowed us to start thinking about our final drive ratio for the entire wheel. Um, and this was all done using a dynamic analysis of motion um, translating between rectilinear and uh, angular motion. So as I just alluded to, um, that dynamic analysis allowed us to determine a final drive ratio um, between the engine RPM and the speed of the monocycle as a whole. Uh, as you can see tabulated in this chart, uh, it far exceeds the 10 miles per hour that we sought to uh, uh, in our criteria. And uh, you can see that there's a sudden jump from zero to 10 miles per hour. That's only because of the nature of the drivetrain that we're using. We have a centrifugal clutch that will initiate the power transfer. So the centrifugal clutch will slowly engage over the course of about 1,800 to 2,200 RPM. It won't just be suddenly going 10 miles an hour when you start the thing. Um, some of the other components that we wanted to do systematic analyses on were the chain drive system, the shaft and keyways, weldments for the seat, as well as a couple of solid work simulations for structures. So as I just said, um, one of the major structures that we wanted to do a solid works analysis on was the outer loop. Um, it, was going to be, it was going to be bearing the whole load of what we assumed to be 400 pounds, rider included, and we wanted to uh, figure out what material would be um, would best accomplish the goals that we laid out. So we ran a simulation where we emulated the cross member as a rigid body and the outer loop as a flexible body uh, using different materials, and we just tabulated the results. And we also thought about things such as cost, machinability, um, would we have access to that material, and we determined that uh, galvanized steel would be the best choice for us. This is another structural simulation that we did. This is of the cross member this time that I had just pointed out. Um, we again ran a couple of different materials. We wanted to see which one would perform and give us desirable results. Um, as you can see, uh, obviously the results are different. Uh, and 1045 carbon steel had much less give uh, where the seat was as the aluminum, and that's led us to roll with uh, the steel as our choice of material for the cross member. Um, as I've already mentioned a couple times, SolidWorks was just instrumental in um, designing the monocycle. Um, as well as running the simulations, we used it to make a complete 3D model of the monocycle. We ran the studies, uh, we created industrial drawings, we got data for um, different uh, mathematical analyses that we did on different components. Um, it would be really difficult to do this project without SolidWorks. Uh, a couple other analyses that we want to talk to about was the weldment analysis for the seat. Um, we understood that uh, this seat was going to be a major load bearing structure and we wanted to make sure that it was secured uh, no matter what. So for example, we wanted to look at what would happen if the rider if the rider's weight was suddenly shifted to one side or the other, um, and that's what this analysis was intended to emulate, was how big would the fillet weld be needed, would be, would be needed to be in order to uh, support the load. Um, 
of 300 pounds. That's the weight of the rider and the seat included. Um, doing so, in order to do so, we looked at several geometry factors of the weld. For example, the linear inches of weld, um, the volume of the weld, the allowable shear stress on the weld, and we were able to determine that an eighth inch fillet weld would be sufficient to hold the weight of the rider on one side of the seat. So a couple other design components that we looked at, we wanted to verify that the um, bearing dynamic load rating of the bearings that we selected would be sufficient for the loads that would be impressed on by the motor. Um, we did this by looking at the pressure angle that the chain would create between the sprocket and be transferred to the bearing. And um, it turned out that the allowable um, uh, dynamic load rating of the bearings that we selected was about 2,600 pounds, and it would only be subject to about 500. So that worked out well. We also wanted to control failure, uh, plan for the worst with our keyway design. We selected a material that is softer than all the other materials in the drivetrain um, in order to um, make that the component that would be most likely to fail, but would also still transmit the required torque. And we also included a retaining ring on the uh, output shaft of our uh, drivetrain. Um, the retaining ring is not actually going to be subject to any enormous thrust loads, but we computed that uh, it would be capable of withstanding about 3,600 pounds of thrust load, uh, far more than any abnormal circumstances would require. And as I said earlier, SolidWorks allowed us to uh, make a complete set of working industrial drawings. Um, all the weldments, all the manufacturing uh, processes required, the build materials, it was all able to be created, and uh, we firmly believe that it would be able to be handed to any fabricator and they'd be able to make it from the working industrial drawings themselves. And now we're going into the fabrication part, that's what we were um, attempting to do in the design is to be able to um, create a design where it could be given to a fabricator and have the uh, design followed and that's exactly what we were trying to do. Um, so we knew there were going to be a handful of compromises going from the design to um, creating the prototype just because uh, we, do, we don't have all of the means of production uh, available to us. So there's being college students, um, we, what we have available to us um, on, on campus is you know get the, the ice lab in which we've been um, work, working in quite a bit. Um, and we've been um, calling out to a number of manufacturers in the area, trying to get a couple, get um, necessary parts here and there. Um, and um, so those were a couple. So uh, with just with the availability of those, there were a couple compromises we had to make. Um, for example, uh, like you'll see in just a moment, is for the bike frame instead of using. Or, I'm sorry, for the for the frame, we used a bike frame um, instead of a uh, rigid bar, um, and I'll explaining that more in just a moment um, and but aside from that we did we attempted to follow our design as closely as possible just making minor uh, minor changes um, to the prototype so the um, there were a couple initial setbacks um, one of which was creating the outer ring so the monocycle ride as, as you saw in the design the monocycle rides um, and this is an inner ring and an outer ring. The outer ring is, uh, provides a lot of structure to, to the monocycle. Um, as I said, we, don't, we didn't have all of the means of manufacturing available to us. And one of the things that we, uh, we accounted on in the design was having a, uh, a, length of, a length of pipe long enough to um, create the outer wheel in one solid piece of pipe and having a hydraulic pipe bender. Um, which will would create a, uh, a consistent radius going all the way around the pipe that was not available to us. That was one of the things that we tried to um, reach out to companies for, um, and uh, we called a number of manufacturers, called a number of manufacturers, um, trying to get this, and it was a bit of a um, that was a bit of a setback. Uh, um, and the other thing was that uh, we've had a lot of experience with uh, the design and the calculation and kind of the, um, the, mechan the engineering aspect of the, uh, of the design process. And this is, enough, this is um, one of the first uh, or, uh, opportunities we've had to kind of get our feet wet in the fabrication process. Um, so this was, we um, kind of, there, were a, there was a bit of a learning curve for us as far as making the, uh, creating the prototype. Um, so we started with, was as I said, we started with a uh, 
modifying a bicycle. So as you can see here, we, we used a, uh, a bicycle frame. We were able to um, rip all the parts of it off and use just the frame. This provided enough um, structural stability for us. Um, and actually something, uh, the reason we chose this frame specifically was because uh, it's bolted right here, which um, means these two parts of the frame can um, move a can move independently, which means which uh, provided a little bit of flexibility for putting the um, frame into the uh, inner ring, which was actually very helpful. Um, and then, yeah, mounting the engine, so we were able to mount the engine right to the frame right here. Um, and this bike frame actually, um, this this was the big comp the big compromise that we made in the design, and it actually turned out to be fantastic. Um, so creating the inner frame, we took two three quarter inch uh, lengths of pipe, bent them around, connected them to either end of the bike frame, and as you can see here, this was the this is how we created the inner ring. Um, when putting the inner ring inside the outer ring, um, like I said before, uh, because it's bolted right here, because the and with the um, the three quarter inch pipe being being more pliable, um, there we were able to. Uh, there was a little bit of play in those, and it was uh, a very easy process getting the inner frame into the outer wheel. Um, and then, as you can see, as um, the motor still being mounted to that frame right there. For the final drivetrain, um, we, as Nate alluded to before, we were using a chain drive. This is a very common drive system in a lot of uh, smaller uh, single rider vehicles. Um, here you can see um, on the drive shaft of the motor, you can see our centrifugal clutch. This is the this centrifugal clutch um, engaged at about 1800 RPMs. So uh, once you turn on the motor, the drive shaft will spin, but because the centrifugal clutch doesn't engage, this allows the vehicle to idle, which is very useful. Um, and then the chain drive goes back to the drive sprocket. The drive sprocket here is connected to the rubber drive bushing. This rubber drive bushing was uh, in contact with the outer wheel This um, and the, the, the friction, the coefficient of friction between the rubber and the steel of the outer wheel uh, provided enough, enough friction to um, uh, allow us the non-positive uh, power transmission that we were looking for. So some of our design conclusions, unfortunately, the monocycle as it stands right now does not function up there does not um, meet the design criteria that we originally set forth this is because of the uh, the means of manufacturing the means of manufacturing so when when bending the outer wheel we had to bend it by hand um, we had to buy two 10 foot lengths of pipe um, these which these two 10 foot lengths had to be bent individually bent individually one had to be cut to um, the size that we needed and then they had to be joined together um, this process this process meant that it wasn't a perfect circle going around um, and at certain points of the circle one of the rollers would actually disengage causing the uh, monocycle to lose structural integrity um, in a again with uh, more of a means of manufacturing available um, we would have been able to use that hydraulic uh, pipe roller to create a continuous uh, radius around the pipe, and that would have helped our design um, immensely. Our setbacks were primarily in the, in the form of fabrication, just trying to um, get that uh, the outer wheel um, bent by the hydro bent by the pipe roller, um, finding trying to find a couple uh, a couple pieces here and there um, that we needed to, but. All told, the goals of the senior project were were met. We created a design, we followed that design, and created a prototype based off that design that resembled it very well with only a couple minor uh, modifications to it. Um, and without a couple, with the uh, with more of a means of manufacturing available to us, it would have absolutely been a working prototype. It would have been able to it would have been um, able to ride. But unfortunately, there were a couple of uh, things that were a little out, that were a bit out of our control. So I think that's it. I think that concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching. Thank you.